ever thought about what you'd like to have with you uh, in the way in terms of personal survival gear on a, on a cross country? Well, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to talk about personal survival gear uh, for flying. And I like to break it down into two things. I think about land and water. To me, they're totally separate. We did a video a little while ago about the flyaway kit for a Bonanza, and really that's for that particular airplane for that trip. Uh, a flyaway kit is more airplane related. Personal survivor gear is another thing. So stick with us on Flywire and let's talk about personal survival gear. Break things down into personal survivor gear as uh, into two things: land and water. When we were in the Air Force in the fighter business, um, we had to uh, we had to look at both. You ended up carrying both of those things at one time, um, and they were all miniaturized and, and everything. And you had uh, kits in your seat uh, to carry all the survival stuff, and you wore a, a vest with all kinds of stuff in it. And uh, then you also had a personal flotation device in case you were in the water, uh, got into the water. And we only wore those for long, for overwater flights and things like that. And sometimes you'd even wear a poopy suit, uh, for, call it an immersion suit, uh, for really cold temperatures because if it's uh, really below standard temperature, somewhere in the 50s or the 60s, you're gonna start to get uh, hy hypothermia uh, pretty fast. And then if it's really cold, you know, in the, the 40s, well, you've only got minutes to get out of your out of the water into a raft, and lose you within minutes you lose control of your hands. They just become clubs. So the big important thing there is to get out of the ra out of the water into a raft. But so I, I talk about two things: land and water. First off, let's talk about water survival. <clears throat> I think it's important to have if I'm flying over water. I, I have this, uh, uh, my demarcation point really is, is if it's further than I can swim and I'm not that good of a swimmer, then I want to have uh, water survival gear or I just don't make that flight. So here's a couple of things I want. I want a life raft. This is a, a four to six person life raft from Survival Products. And uh, the, if somebody's flying with me, their job, sitting in the right seat, their job is to go out the door with this. And then, and then we activate it. Uh, they they get out of the wing, get out of the, off the airplane, off the wing, into the water, and then they activate the, the the vest or sorry the survival raft. This is real important. I like to, I like to think that a four person raft is really good enough for two people. Uh, you need about a six person raft for three or four people. It just gets really really crowded. And uh, they uh, uh, some of these rafts come with bare bones. Some of them come with. Uh, different survival gear uh, along with it. And uh, some of them even come with, um, well, there's the TSO versions basically that are approved by the Coast Guard and, uh, and the FAA for use if you're gonna go fly over water, uh, like the Atlantic or something like that. And I've been thinking about doing that. So this particular raft isn't good for that. Uh, it's a good thing, you know, for flying uh, over the Michigan lakes, the Great Lakes or something something like that, but there's the raft and then there's the personal flotation device. I like to think of a, uh, for me, the personal flotation device is an absolute necessity. Um, and I also like to have a, a PFD with uh, pockets attached, so I don't necessarily have to wear that survival vest, but this comes with pockets that I can, uh, I can put on and they sit right here on your side. You can put all kinds of things in them. This is a BFD from Switlik, and it's pretty effective. All you have to do is uh, uh, pull the handle and inflate it, and you're pretty good to go. It also, I also have uh, various things on here in the different pockets. This is, if I'm flying with somebody else, then uh, they're going to have one of these too, and we can hook, hook up to each other. Okay, one of the things I would, uh, if I do make that flight over the Atlantic, I'm thinking about buying a uh, one-person life raft from Switlik that make a one-person. That's basically a copy of what we used in the Air Force in the fighter business, which is a one-person uh, life raft 
and it also has a hood, et cetera, so it's real brightly colored so they can find you over the water. And it comes with these things that uh, you can hook together so you can stick together. Otherwise, you're gonna float apart pretty quickly, and uh, that's not a good thing. <clears throat> I don't wanna spend a lot of time thinking about it. So one of the, some of the other things I put in these pockets are uh, some of the really important things is uh, this one. This is a, uh, a personal locator beacon from, uh, re uh, it's a rescue link from ACR. Uh, very, very important item to have nowadays. And here's the other thing I like to do. Uh, this is, I didn't invent it. We learned it, from, learned it in the Air Force is, if you don't have it tied to your vest, you're gonna lose it. So everything's tied to the vest. So there's that. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? We've got a little personal survival kit. This one isn't tied, I need to do that. I'm, I'm just putting this together, so you'll have to forgive me. But this comes with, it's prepackaged, got a whistle, uh, some sewing kit, sewing material, etc. It's got a compass, um, all kinds of little bitty things like that, a space blanket, and a little something to read, instructions, and when you're sitting there bored in the raft or in the water. This is a really cool little device. It's a, uh, a uh, basically a signaling device that's a laser. It puts out a, a, uh, uh, a wide, not a laser spot, but a, a, a laser um, line essentially. So then what you do is, is then you wipe that across the uh, field of view of the airplane as it's coming to you, and they're gonna see the flash. I know you can get in trouble with the FAA if you do this uh, on the ground. Um, just on a regular day, but in a survival situation, this signaling device will work a lot better than a mirror, uh, which I also have. This is one, one of the things that I have left over from the Air Force. And this is a signaling mirror right here, and uh, you can figure out where the sun is and sighting through this thing right here or just figuring it out this way. <coughs> and then you can uh, drag the flash of light over uh, across the airplane as you're going as you're looking at it and uh, you can't really see it right now but it's doing a pretty good flash over there on the on the wall so that's that's uh, one of the other things I like to have um, like I say I think the laser is going to be a lot more effective than uh, the mirror but the mirrors traditional has been used for a long time uh, this is uh, kind of this is kind of important I think even for a water survival situation, and I'm, like I said, I'm putting together, I haven't tied it on there yet. This is a knife, and it's a folding knife, so I don't actually puncture anything, but I can use it for a lot of different things. It's got a serrated uh, edge right there, it's super sharp, and I can use it for all kinds of things. It's a lock blade, so if I catch fish or something, I can, uh, I can uh, skin it and do what I need to to survive. This is a uh, signaling, it's a rescue streamer is what it's called. And uh, you attach it to yourself and then you throw it out. And what it does is it makes a, uh, an orange streamer that's easier to pick up off the water that's uh, ab about uh, two feet wide and something like 20 some odd feet long. Can't remember exactly. But uh, they're gonna see that airborne a lot faster than they're gonna see uh, your little body floating around your little head, floating around wearing uh, this device in the water. And uh, that'll get you rescued a lot faster. So this is uh, the thing about uh, water survival is things can happen so quickly that you're gonna need to wear everything you plan on having. Uh, the, that carrying that raft out, that's kind of a, well, we might lose it kind of a situation. Um, I like to have the rafts tied to me some way. So as I get out, then I, whatever I'm getting into the water with, uh, that's what I'm expecting to survive with. If I'm wearing a poopy suit, an immersion suit, uh, for over the Atlantic or something like that where the temperatures are cold, I have to wear it, okay? A lot of people I've seen do videos of it with it around their waist and uh, thinking, well, I can, because it's not very comfortable to wear, to be honest, but they're thinking that, well, I've gonna have plenty of time if I had to put the airplane down and I'll put it on then and then we'll get in the water and, uh, and I'll be good to go. Well, the thing is, is it never happens. Um, you know, the, it's uh, human nature that you don't, you want to be more comfortable, 
But the problem is, is that when the, the stuff hits the fan, you're just not going to have time to deal with that. You're going to be, your whole brain's going to be soaked up with uh, flying the airplane, you know, trying to maximize your time airborne, trying to find somebody to talk to, trying to get the thing restarted, all those kind of things before you have to worry about a ditching. And then I got to worry about the ditching. What direction are the waves? How big are the swells? How, what's direction of the winds? So where am I going to put the airplane down on the swell? That's a whole different uh, kettle of fish to talk about. And that's going to soak up most of your time, most of your thinking, and you're not going to have time to put that suit on. So when you get in the water, it's going to do you absolutely no good at all. So have it with you and have it on. That's the important thing. All right, let's talk about land survival. Land survival, like I say, is something totally different than water survival. I'm thinking I'm going to have time uh, if I put the airplane down. If I put it down in the mountains, in a mountain ridge, well, I might lose some of my stuff because I'm going to keep it in the back. I'm not going to wear it. I might uh, change some of the stuff that I had in my uh, PFD and put it in a vest because I've still got a vest and uh, wear that so I have it on me. But for the major, the other part of it, um, I'm going to have it in a backpack in the back of the airplane uh, with a couple of exceptions. Oh, as long as I was talking about it, that ACR uh, is pretty good. Uh, the Rescue Link is pretty good. This is a spot. It does the same thing. Uh, you can even send text messages with this thing. And uh, it's a subscription fee. That's another option for you. So land survival, let's talk about that real quick. What I'm thinking is... If uh, I'm flying basically east of the Rockies, I really don't need that much in the way of land survival gear. Probably the best thing land survival would be my telephone. And with that, I can, uh, I can do just about everything I need to do. Uh, it shouldn't be that long of a walk. I should be able to find some kind of uh, signal and talk to somebody or something like that. Um, but if I'm in the mountains or in the western part of the US, there are places where, you know, there's no self-coverage. There's no nothing. And it's miles and miles and miles So before you get to any up the road or anything like that. So it's really all up to you. And uh, when I'm in that kind of a situation, now I want to be prepared to survive a bit longer. So one of the important things I have is uh, my hatchet. This is a Gerber hatchet. And it's nice and sharp. Comes with a little protection device there. So... I don't screw anything up, uh, but it's a pretty sharp hatchet. I can use this to build fires, cut wood to uh, make uh, shelters, uh, things like that. Uh, if, if I have to, I can defend myself with it. This is another tool. This is a, a SOG, and I actually, uh, it's, a, it's an entrenching tool, not to surprise you, but I keep a couple other things in here as well. Uh, this is a fire starter right here. Um, that's also something I can uh, uh, start a spark like that. And that is pretty handy. Uh, so I keep that in with that. Um, this is a uh, another lock blade knife. Um, knives are always a really good thing to have. So I want to have as many <laughs> as, as I can tolerate. Um, That's the knife. Okay, what do we have here? We have, oh yes, it's the multi-tool. This is an, a really amazing thing, and you know, I used to carry this with me in the fighter all the time, uh, good or bad, because there's just a million things you can do with it. It's got all kinds of tools, knives, uh, screwdrivers, all kinds of things that uh, you can use to help you survive. So the multi-tool is an incredible device. And I actually have a couple of them. This is a entrenching device. Uh, not going to dig any foxholes with it, but uh, I can I can uh, help with my shelter. I can help with sanitary situations, other things like that. The uh, entrenching tool is huge. That's one of the things I carry in the airplane. Here's another knife. This one uh, comes with a sharpening device right here attached to it, and. Not really a fighting knife, it's more of a survival knife, and that's what I'm interested in. And uh, it's got a serrated bread edge right there that's pretty amazing. It's nice and sharp. If I kill an animal or something like that, then I can skin it 
and uh, it'll help me survive. And this other device will help me start a fire. So this is some of the things that I use. Let's put this here so it's out of our way. All right, I can only carry, all right, I can only carry so much. So in reality, what I do is, is I, I have a backpack all stuffed. Uh, that stuff we just looked at for land survival, that's for a longer term situation. This is I'm gonna be able to hike out or I'm gonna, I'm gonna hike out or I'm gonna spend some time. So sanitation is important. I got soap, I've got uh, a rain poncho, I've got water, emergency water. I do carry water, more water in the airplane just about every time I fly. So in general, I'm gonna have a couple of gallons of water and hopefully in the desert, that's gonna be enough for the situation. Another rain poncho if I need it. And this is always a real handy, handy device is a pair of uh, adjustable uh, link uh, wrench. Okay thing about a backpack like this is you can stuff all kinds of stuff in it. Uh, this is a little LED flashlight and uh, comes with its own battery. <coughs> or take an inventory of the of my backpack. Uh, let's see. Let's open this up. What do we have in here? Huh, another knife. This one is actually got a uh, big serrated edge on it. It's not more of a saw, so I can saw limbs and I can set myself up in a shelter or uh, set up uh, what I need for starting fires, uh, etc. And yet another multi-tool. This one's got a little bit different, but uh, like I said, you, these things are worth their weight in gold if you actually have to get down again, and survive on the ground. What else do we have? We got a whistle, get somebody's attention. Carabiners are always a help. And this is a uh, sharpening stone or I can uh, create some sparks with it. So that's all, all pretty good. I can hit the ground running with my backpack. Now let's take a look at what we have on the inside. These are uh, food. That's a couple of these things. Uh, it's like an MRE, the civilian version of uh, MRE. And uh, this is enough to last, there's enough calories here to last you probably five days. So uh, there's a lot of calories in it, you don't need it all. Uh, but there it is, I've got food, I've got water, I've got toilet paper, that's huge. Uh, bungee cords, these are really great for building shelters if you need to. Uh, these are candles, so I can have some light if I need it. Uh, these are little fire starting materials. Here's a, 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 a lantern, a little lantern. That works out really well. <laughs> Fix a flat, in case that, uh, that need that for my car. Another, so I got three meals, I only remembered two, but there I go, oh, if you get a little cold. I got a hat, uh, let's see, bottles. This is, uh, actually I can, uh, filter water. You don't want to drink just uh, open water uh, from a creek or a lake or a pond or something like that out in the mountains because you're probably going to get giardia. You're going to get little bugs and you're going to hit, uh, get the uh, Montezuma's Revenge. It isn't a good thing. So filter your water. Keep it in a uh, uh, another device to uh, carry it around. Um, let's see. Another filter for the water and this is a, a bivy sack so it's not a full up uh, sleeping bag but a lot of times and especially in the desert you won't need a full up sleeping bag a bivy sack would be a wonderful thing let's see uh, this is for carrying water 
This is, uh, these are warming devices, so you can just open and crack it and then open it, and uh, it uh, can help you keep uh, warm. It claims for 24 hours. I've used these before. They work pretty well. Uh, this is uh, another poncho. Some loom sticks, chemical lights, and what do we have here? I think this is an, a little entrenching tool. So I can do small amount of digging if I don't have my big one, or I need to just do small amounts. That works real well. Okay. Got a flashlight, matches, spare batteries, all that kind of thing. Uh, this is uh, first aid gears. Earplugs, um, various dressings for my first aid situation, um, a first aid kit, smaller kit, and this is an ex-military first aid kit. I have a couple of those just in case. So that is the down and dirty of what is in the backpack. Got this little thing here. The whole idea of this thing is designed to keep you going for three to five days. And in case of an emergency. And this is my, my uh, a bigger version of that, uh, but combines the first aid with uh, waterproof matches, with uh, bandages, a space blanket, two space blankets. Never know when you might need two. Here's another signaling mirror. Uh, this is uh, another multi-tool right here and this is a, a, a strap you can use as a tourniquet if you need to use that and these are some drugs I keep drugs in here Benadine, Benadine soap um, some sewing material goes well with that uh, some aspirin things like that if I need uh, I have got all that available a dressing bandage, uh, bandage scissors these uh, are pretty strong and they work well with bandages, etc. So that's uh, my land survival backpack. And if I'm going to Vegas, I'm going to uh, California or something like that, I'm flying over the deserts, I'm flying over the mountains, I'm carrying this backpack with me. It's usually going to be in the back because, like I said, I plan on, uh, I'm hoping I'm going to have some time to get my stuff out of the airplane and figure out what my survival plan is and how I'm going to recover. That's my quick and dirty what uh, land and water survival is. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you did, hit subscribe and the bell so you get the notices next time. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and tell me what you would like to carry or what you think would be an, approval, uh, an improvement on what I have. See you next time on Flywire.